أيها السيدات والسادة أساتذتي وزملائي الكرام مرحبا بكم في اليوم الثاني من مؤتمر شباب الباحثين الثامن للعام الدراسي 2021 والذي يعقد إلكترونيا من خلال برنامج مايكروسوفت تيمز بسم الله نبدأ فعاليات اليوم الثاني من المؤتمر واستئنافا لسلسلة المحاضرات العلمية يطيب لنا اللقاء بمحاضرة جديدة وعالم جديد المحاضرة بعنوان Antibody like nano disc as a potential therapy for coronavirus infection يحاضر فيها الدكتور محمود نصر الأستاذ المساعد بكلية الطب جامعة هارفورد بالولايات المتحدة الأمريكية والباحث الرئيسي بمنظمة ماس جنرال بريجهام إن بوسطن هذا وقد حصل الدكتور محمود نصر على بكالوريوس الصيدلة من كلية الصيدلة جامعة قناة السويس وحصل على درجة الدكتوراه في العلوم الصيدلانية اكتشاف الأدوية من جامعة نورث إيسترن في بوسطن بالولايات المتحدة الأمريكية ثم تلقى تدريبه بعد الدكتوراه في مجال البيولوجيا الهيكلية لبروتين الغشاء وعلم الفيروسات في جامعتي ييل وهارفورد ويعد الدكتور محمود نصر رائدا دوليا ناشئا في مجال بروتينات الأغشية وتكنولوجيا الأقراص النانوية إذ يدرس مختبره الأحداث الأولية التي أدت إلى عدوى فيروسية على المستوى الجزيئي بهدف تحديد التغييرات الهيكلية المرتبطة بدخول الخلية وتسليم الجينوم إلى السيتوبلازم بمستوى غير مسبوق من التفاصيل بالإضافة إلى ذلك يستخدم أقراصا نانوية كبيرة وأقراصا نانوية مربوطة بالحمض النووي لدراسة اندماج فيروس نقص المناعة البشرية مع الخلايا المضيفة يمكن بعد ذلك استخدام هذه المعلومات لتصميم مضادات فيروسات ولقاحات جديدة ضد مجموعة متنوعة من الفيروسات الصعبة بما في ذلك فيروس كورونا المستجد وقد نشر أعماله حول تكنولوجيا الأقراص النانوية في العديد من المجلات الدولية مثل Nature Methods, Nature Protocols and Nature Structural and Molecular Biology بالإضافة إلى ذلك فقد قدم الدكتور محمود نصر التوجيه والتدريب للعديد من المعامل على الصعيدين الوطني والدولي ومن دواعي الفخر أن الدكتور نصر قد تمكن من اختراع عدة تقنيات لاكتشاف الفيروسات وعلاجها وقدم العديد من طلبات براءات الاختراع لهذه التقنيات بعضها مرتبط بعلاجات وتشخيص فيروس كورونا بالإضافة إلى ذلك حصل مؤخرا على منحة NIH RADX لتطوير اختبار اللعاب السريع للكشف عن سارس كوفيد 2 والذي يعتمد على تقنية اكتشاف جديدة قام بتطويرها أيها الجمع الكريم الآن يتفضل الدكتور محمود نصر بإلقاء محاضرة بعنوان Antibody like nano disc as a potential therapy for coronavirus infection Thank you very much for the, uh, for the kind uh, introduction I'm very happy to be here um, and uh, give the talk today about the nano disc and thank you so, so much for the uh, uh, kind introduction and the invitation so today I'll, I'll talk about uh, um, antibody like nano disc as a potential uh, antiviral therapy against SARS-CoV-2 uh, but first I would like to uh, thank the people uh, who helped uh, make this happen so uh, here's my acknowledgement uh, slides. Uh, uh, I would like to thank people from uh, my lab as well as uh, from uh, Wagner lab as, um, and the Alan Brown lab at, at Harvard Medical School. Without them, it wouldn't be uh, possible to, to make this work. So uh, my talk is divided into three parts. The first part, I will uh, give you an update uh, on SARS-CoV-2 vaccines. Uh, next part, I will talk about uh, the, uh, the new antiviral uh, treatment uh, for SARS-CoV-2. And then the third part, I will um, talk about the antibody like nano disc uh, as a potential uh, antiviral for uh, SARS CoV 2. So uh, there are several types of vaccine uh, RNA vaccine based vaccine, which uh, this is what Moderna and Pfizer uh, is. It's our RNA involved in some lipid nanoparticles. And then there is an activated vaccine. Um, this is basically coronavirus that. Uh, treated chemically uh, to inactivate the, the virus. And uh, this is an uh, example for that is uh, Sinovac, the Chinese uh, uh, coronavirus vaccine. Also, there is a recombinant uh, protein vaccine. So they can use part of the virus, uh, which could be the spike or part of the spike itself could be a receptor binding domain. 
um, and there is a company in, in the US developing this uh, a recombinant uh, uh, protein vaccine. It's called Novavax. Also, there is a vector uh, based vaccine. This is example for that is AstraZeneca, um, Johnson Johnson and the uh, uh, Sputnik uh, 5 vaccine. Also, there is a life attenuated uh, vaccine and uh, uh, the uh, uh, Serum Institute of India uh, developing uh, this kind of vaccine. So I'll uh, start uh, explaining uh, to you the uh, how the vector based uh, vaccine work. So basically, uh, here is coronavirus. So coronavirus uh, is RNA uh, virus, and there is uh, part of this RNA uh, encode the uh, the information for this spike protein. So um, the the scientists take this part of the RNA and then convert it into DNA. Then incorporate it or put it inside uh, adenovirus a uh, virus so the adenovirus uh, it causes common cold um, and uh, that's what they use to deliver this uh, uh, genome that represents the spike protein inside the cells so the adenovirus unlike the coronavirus uh, it has a protein coat and this protein coat really uh, makes the, the the vaccine uh, uh, stable uh, for up to six months uh, in the normal uh, refrigerator. So between um, two to eight uh, degrees Celsius. So when uh, the the vector-based vaccine given, so the adenovirus enter the cell, travel to the nucleus, and then inject the uh, DNA inside the nucleus. Uh, the DNA then uh, uh, transcribed to mRNA, mRNA exit the cell and then uh, go to the uh, ribosome. Ribosome reads the mRNA and then uh, convert it into uh, protein, spike protein. Uh, and it's first converted into monomeric spike protein, which associate together and form trimer spike. The trimer spike uh, travel or goes to the cell surface and then displayed on the cell surface. Um, also, uh, the spike can be uh, chopped off and uh, pieces of it can be presented on the cell surface uh, using the MHC uh, molecules. So these elements here on the cell surface, including the spike protein, as well as the uh, pieces of the spike uh, recognized by the immune system. So, um, a B cell can subset of B cell can uh, recognize and lock onto the spike protein in this uh, vaccinated cell. And uh, if it happened that also this B cell is activated by the uh, helper T cell, uh, it can uh, proliferate. And then the B cell will uh, end up uh, uh, excreting a lot of antibodies. And these antibodies can bind to the uh, circulating uh, virus and mark it for death. Also, it can prevent its attachment to the uh, SARS-CoV-2 receptor, which is uh, ACE2. Some kind of cells, uh, it's called antigen presenting cell, can also um, engulf uh, part of, of the spike and present it on the cell surface. And this, this antigen presenting cell can activate uh, uh, some kind of T cell called uh, a natural killer T cell. This natural killer T cell then can kill the infected cell. So the B cell basically uh, produce antibodies but cannot really kill the uh, infected cell. However, the activated killer T cell can, uh, can get rid of the infected cell. Uh, next, I, I want to uh, uh, the, talk to you about the uh, inactivated uh, vaccine, uh, which is uh, an example for that is the Sinovac. So basically, um, the way they make it, they grow uh, spike, uh, they grow a coronavirus. So they, they can use uh, virus uh, cells or, or the, the monkey kidney cells. Then they make a lot of virus. Uh, they treat it with uh, this chemical, uh, beta uh, propyl propylactone. Uh, this chemical um, uh, uh, bond with the uh, the RNA inside and makes the virus inactive. However, the spike protein uh, remain intact. 
So this uh, approach of uh, uh, in using an activated virus uh, was used to produce uh, polio, uh, rabies, as well as hepatitis A vaccine. So when, uh, uh, when you inject the inactivated coronavirus, the, this can be engulfed by the antigen uh, presenting cells. And then the, in this case, the antigen presenting cell will uh, display part of the spike on the cell surface, as well as other viral protein. It could be, could be nucleocapsid protein, the, the E protein, or other uh, coronavirus protein. And also the uh, B cell can uh, recognize um, the, the spike protein on the surface of the inactivated virus um, and can lock onto that. And then if there is, if these B cells uh, get activated by um, T, helper T cell, then it can also proliferate and produce uh, antibodies that can also cover the virus and mark it for death. So uh, next, uh, I want to tell you about the RNA vaccine. So the RNA vaccine is a, a, a new kind of vaccine that developed uh, uh, by Pfizer uh, as well as the Moderna. So the way it works, um, they envelop or put RNA inside a shell of, of lipids to protect it because RNA is very uh, fragile, unlike the DNA. So when these uh, lipid particles, um, uh, you receive these lipid particles, it enter the cell, and then the RNA that encodes the spike protein um, gets translated uh, by the ribosome to form the spike protein. The spike protein, uh, because it has the transmembrane and the signaling a peptide to go to the cell membrane. It travels to the cell membrane and then it gets displayed on the cell surface and similar activation happen, uh, uh, similar like what I described. So both B cell and, and T cell activation occur here. So next I wanna uh, uh, share with you uh, some updates on the antiviral therapy. So there are several uh, antiviral uh, uh, small molecules available, uh, but these mainly are repurposed um, small molecule or drugs with suboptimal activity. So also there are uh, convalescent uh, plasma, they, ca they can be used. So the convalescent plasma contains some neutralizing antibody that mainly uh, against the spike protein. And this antibody can bind and, and uh, mask uh, the uh, spike protein and prevent its binding to the uh, receptor, the ACE2. There are other uh, small molecules such as chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, and these molecules interfere or, or alter the endosomal pH, uh, which is essential for the proper fusion and release of RNA into the cytoplasm. Other molecules, including remdesivir and ribavirin, also uh, are, are uh, being used or under investigation uh, for for uh, clinical use. The remdesivir is the, is the only one that's really uh, being used actively here in the US. And the remdesivir inhibits the uh, RNA dependent RNA polymerase. There are other molecules uh, uh, like uh, oseltamivir. This molecule interferes with the oxycytosis of the uh, viral particle. Of course, uh, the inflammation is a, um, a big issue uh, when it comes to the COVID-19, and there are currently uh, several uh, drugs available that can alleviate the inflammation, uh, including dexamethasone, as well as uh, tocilizumab, and these can reduce the inflammation. So next, I want to share with you uh, uh, some of the work uh, I'm doing in my lab. Uh, which is in engineering antibody like nanodisc and uh, using it to uh, to uh, uh, treat uh, SARS-CoV-2. This is early uh, still, but I want to share with you the data uh, we have so far. So, but first, before I, I move on, let me give you a brief introduction about uh, nanodisc. So nanodisc inspired uh, from nature. So basically, uh, the liver makes this protein. It's called APOA1 protein or APOLIPO-A1. This protein 
binds to some uh, lipids in the blood and then create or assemble this uh, pre-beta HDL particles. This pre-beta HDL then continue to accumulate cholesterol and then mature into these spherical alpha HDL. The alpha HDL then taken by the, uh, the receptor is called SRB1 or scavenger receptor class uh, B1. So the nanodisc inspired uh, uh, from this pre-beta HDL. It's a discoidal form of this, uh, uh, they call it a good cholesterol. But what we use, we use this lipid binding domain that wrap around the uh, uh, lipid bilayer. We don't use this globular uh, domain here. So in my lab, we use a nano disk uh, for many uh, purposes. Uh, we, we used it to, for example, incorporate several membrane proteins, including ion channels and GPCR, and determine uh, their structures by cryo-EM. Also, we used it to study the uh, viral entry and the genome translocation. So we used it, for example, to study how the RNA of polyvirus translocate across the bilayer to infect cells. And here, for example, this is some recent work that we published. We used it to uh, co-incorporate uh, GPCR and its uh, membrane protein partners, including G-protein heterotrine. So the idea here is to use um, large nano disk as antibody. So the way we do it is we decorate each side of the nano disk with a peptide or a re the receptor or part of the receptor for a given virus. Then the nano disk can bind to circulating uh, a virus. And then uh, this complex is small complex here can be taken by the macrophages and eliminated from the body. So this is how we envisioned it. And this is what we think the extracellular neutralization uh, can happen. Neutralization at level of the cell, um, including inhibition of penetration, inhibition of adsorption, inhibition of uh, budding, as well as uh, uh, prevent the binding to the, uh, the receptor uh, is possible as well. And we have uh, some data support all of these claims. What you see here, um, the you see this this is a real um, authentic uh, polio virus and you can see here nano disk cross linking uh, these uh, virus particles and these are uh, done a couple years ago using cryoia these nano disks are decorated with the polyvirus receptor cd155 so as you know the ace2 is um, uh, required for SARS-CoV-2 entry. And when the coronavirus binds to the ACE2, it gets endocytosed. And then uh, inside the endosome, because the pH is low, uh, that low pH facilitates the fusion of the uh, endosomal membrane with the viral uh, bilayer. And formation of fusion pore followed by the release of RNA and, and then viral replication. The affinity of coronavirus to uh, ACE2 is high, is about 14 uh, nanomolar, which is uh, what we really used to, um, uh, to we, we use this, we took advantage of this to, to design a peptide from ACE2. So there, were, uh, there was a structure uh, published uh, a year ago between ACE2 and the RBD. RBD stands for the receptor binding domain. This is the part of the spike that bind to the ACE2. So if you look closely here, you see you can see that this, the spike uh, protein binds mainly to this peptide. We call it ACE2 peptide. So it's making the major contact here. They are also the RBD making other contact with other region of the ACE2. However, the ACE2 is the major one. Also, there is another uh, uh, paper that was published after showing that the spike protein contains the fatty acid binding pocket next to this uh, ACE2 binding domain. So using these two structures, um, I designed actually the, uh, a peptide linked to fatty acid so that it can enhance the binding. And then we anchored this ACE2 fatty acid chimera to nanodisc to form this uh, nanodisc. And that's what we used 
uh, as antiviral to treat or to uh, as a potential therapy for SARS-CoV-2. So antibody, uh, one of the mechanisms that antibody uh, neutralizes the uh, SARS-CoV-2 is uh, cause agglutination or, or aggregation. Basically, the antibody has uh, two uh, paratopes and each one can bind uh, to uh, can bind to a different virus and, and end up cross-linking the virus. Here we do the same thing. Uh, we're creating nanodisc that can bind to uh, two, dif two different variants uh, at the same time. And then this aggregation uh, caused blocking of attachment to the uh, receptor. So why we uh, really uh, embedded the peptide in nanodisc? Why didn't we use, for example, liposome or other bilayer? Uh, the question, the answer is here. Um, if you decorate the, uh, put the peptide on the surface of a liposome and then incubate it with the virus, you might end up having uh, fusion and these two uh, particles fuse together, but the RNA is still trapped inside and uh, this uh, newly formed particle can be still infectious. On the other hand, nanodisc, because of the shape of the discoidal shape, once it fuses with the uh, viral particle, it can actually make fusion uh, poor and then uh, the RNA can get released and then this particle will be no longer infectious. So here side by side, if, uh, if a coronavirus binds to nanodisc versus a coronavirus without nanodisc. So this is the normal uh, path that I just described. Uh, the RNA release into the cytoplasm has to happen for uh, to in order for the cell to be infected and in order for the virus to be replicated. A coronavirus bound to the nanodisc uh, get into cytos under the low pH, the fusion will happen between the nanodisc as, and the viral uh, bilayer. This will result in the release of the RNA inside and trap and entrapment of, of the RNA inside the endosome. And in this case, it, no infection happened, it's just the uptake of the viral particles, but then this RNA can be degraded uh, later on. So this is uh, the other uh, part of the mechanism. So we, sc we screened different peptides from ACE2, uh, and, and again, we, we found uh, one peptide, specific peptide that bind uh, very well with the uh, spike protein, and that's what we use to create the uh, ACE2 peptide fatty acid and incorporate it into nanodisc. This, is, this was mainly done by my, my postdoc, Philip uh, Ishan. And we did docking of uh, this fatty acid, uh, uh, ACE2 chimera, and we found that this, this peptide can actually lock this uh, RBD or, or receptor binding domain in a closed conformation, thus preventing the uh, open conformation, which, which is required for infection, because the open conformation can uh, bind to the ACE2 and then uh, facilitate the virus entry. Here we uh, show that the binding affinity in the single uh, digit nanomolar, and we can create nanodisc with uh, increasing number of peptides per, per disc. And this is how we make it. We, we uh, add the peptide to nanodisc and then we perform size exclusion chromatography to purify it from any aggregates and we perform SDS page to really ensure the incorporation of the peptide into nanodisc. And then nanodisc is two particles, as I mentioned, uh, has the ability to cross-link the um, viral particles, and we show her by EM that the nanodisc indeed can cross-link the virus. And here we did the pseudoviral uh, uh, neutralization assay. We used lentivirus, and lentivirus, uh, that lentivirus display on the surface a spike protein, and the spike protein uh, can, of course, infect the uh, HIC uh, cells uh, that expressing ACE2. And this pseudovirus contain a GFP reporter or a green fluorescence protein reporter. So whenever infection happens uh, to the cell, you can see that green light. So in presence of nanodisc, we don't see, we see uh, a great reduction in uh, infection. And then we, if you compare that nanodisc versus the peptide, the free peptide by itself, you can see actually the nanodisc uh, is essential and provide a new dimension of antiviral activity here. So here's the conclusion. 
uh, there are uh, several approved vaccine and uh, a lot of these vaccines are uh, highly effective in preventing uh, COVID-19. And also there are uh, a lot of repurposed uh, drugs that can be used in the clinic to treat SARS-CoV-2 infection. In my lab, we have demonstrated that nanodisc is molecule are potent antagonist of SARS-CoV-2 infection, and we showed that in uh, neutral, viral neutralization assay, it's it's working very well. The nanodisc provides another dimension for antiviral activity, as it amplifies the antiviral effect of ACE2 peptide because it creates or or, or causes a fusion uh, or and self proliferation of a viral of the viral entity. And thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mahmoud, for, for your lecture. I didn't receive till now any questions so far, so I'd like to, to thank you for your contribution and for your work. And do, do you think that we are in the right way to, to make a, as a test for COVID-19? So you, you, you told me that you have the something for the saliva, for saliva test. Do you think it's more simple and more effective? So uh, I have received some uh, funding from NIH to uh, to make this uh, test, the rapid antigen saliva test. Uh, it's basically based on changing color. So uh, you add the saliva and it change color, then you have the virus. It's it's more of qualitative test. It's not meant to be uh, quantitative, but. But the, the goal is to create a test that's like uh, you can uh, read a after two, three minutes if you have, and, and, and you can tell if you have coronavirus or not. That's the goal. Okay, and is it selective for coronavirus or? Is it yeah, so far the preliminary data we have, uh, it shows it's highly selective for SARS-CoV-2. Okay, and, and do you think this is, it could be applied uh, in the next few few months or few weeks for everyone or just only a research? No, actually the, the goal of this Radix award, they call it Radix award, uh, they give you the money and, and expect uh, uh, it will go far within a year. So we are working so hard with NIH to develop this test. Yeah. So hopefully uh, within a year we have another test uh, that's really uh, fast and easy to use. And, and anyone can use it at home or uh, clinic, etc. Okay, so I have uh, now a question. So comparing side effects of old vaccine uh, VS combined with NanoDisc. Um, what, do, what do you think that about speaking about the side effect? Is there any difference between the traditional way and the NanoDisc you develop? So, so the nanodisc, uh, what, what I showed now is, is more of antiviral treatment, right? Uh, we're working on another project, which using nanodisc as a vaccine a platform, it's still early on, and I don't expect to have anything soon uh, based on this platform. But the goal here is, uh, and, and the goal of my lab is to create really a universal coronavirus vaccine, so vaccine that can work for this coronavirus and next pandemic, uh, because the coronavirus has, uh, uh, this on, on its, the spike has a highly conserved region on the S2 part, and this, if you can present this uh, uh, part of the S2 to the immune system, then and and you can uh, elicit antibody against this S2 part, then you can actually create a universal uh, vaccine that can work uh, for SARS-CoV-2 for other coronaviruses that emerge because there is a high conserved region there. So we're using NanoDisc for this purpose as well as creating, if you wish, a seasonal uh, vaccine, because there are uh, a lot of people expect that uh, we would be vaccinated every three, four years or so. It's not going to be really uh, going away. Uh, it's not going to be one and done. Uh, it will be more, more or less like the flu uh, shots that you get every year. You update the vaccine every year. So there will be a lot of still demand and, and uh, there is a, a lot of need for new technology and a new platform to create vaccine. So I'm working on this uh, as well as the, the, the test. Uh, the side effects, so I know the, the Sinovac vaccine as well as the, um, uh, uh, the AstraZeneca are in Egypt, right? AstraZeneca is uh, a vector-based. They use the uh, adenovirus uh, that uh, 
because they are called uh, common called in chimpanzee. Um, and these vector based are traditional. Sorry, the vector based relatively new. OK, mm -hmm. but and, and there are of course side effects. And, and of course you heard about uh, all of the news about the plots and all of that. There is no relation yet, so uh, there are no proven uh, uh, relation between the vaccine and the plots, but there are side effects. Any vaccine has side effects. The, there are traditional the inactivated virus. Actually, the Sinovac one is more for, for a, tradi a traditional approach you've been using and, and used in with polyvirus, hepatitis A. Uh, the RNA is very new and we don't know yet. So I personally got the Moderna shots, uh, the RNA virus uh, vaccine. I don't know yet. The uh, So far I didn't experience serious side effects, but no one knows what will happen a year from now. So uh, there are, every vaccine has side effects, of course. Yeah, but I encourage people really to take uh, whatever available, uh, no matter how that is the side effects. <laughs> it's better than not taking the vaccine. Uh, no, COVID caused death. Yeah. Okay. And, and it caused clotting and other uh, severe uh, disease side effects. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mahmoud, for your talk. Uh, I would like to thank you for your informative talk about antibody like NanoDesk as a potential therapy for coronavirus infection. and. In behalf of the Young Researcher Committee, I would like to thank you very much for your contribution to our conference. Thank, thank you very much, and, and again, thank you for the invitation. Thank you.